Today, we become legends. So my first lore video explaining the Pantheon Wars, the start of Smite's modern lore, was really well received and I had a ton of requests to cover more Smite lore in a similar format. So here we are. If you want to catch these newest lore videos as they drop, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. But without further ado, let's jump into the Fall of War, the second chapter of Smite's lore. This lore is based on the 2018 Odyssey, the first event in Smite to have major lore progression associated with it. There are several chapters within the Fall of War that all have their own short animated video to complement them. That's what I'll be using as the background footage to illustrate the lore. The Fall of War follows directly on from the Pantheon Wars which I covered in my first video, so if you haven't seen that one I highly recommend watching it first and then coming back here as there will be spoilers for the first arc in this video. The Fall of War opens with the world reeling from Hell's diabolical plan to unchain Fenrir and unleash Ragnarok. The Eye of Ra no longer lights the skies, dimmed by Ares in his fury. Rain no longer fell in the Mayan jungles. Mortals prayed to Chak to lift the drought and fill their rivers with water once more. Chuck swung his axe with the might of a god to crack the sky and wash the lands with glorious rain, but the heavens did not buckle, the drought remained. Mortals began to lose faith in Chuck. he was growing weak. Having tracked Anubis to the Mayan jungles, Ares is among the crowd, observing. Inquiring as to the whereabouts of the jackal, Chuck explains that Anubis was wounded. He did what he could and sent the god on his way. Ares has a sixth sense for weakness and a seventh for power. Seeing Chak's downfall written across the faces of his followers, Ares ripped Chak's mighty axe from his hands and buried it in his chest. Knowing he would never see the face of his beloved again, a single tear fell from Chak's eye to wet the ground, far from the rainstorm he wished to summon. As Chak left this realm, the skies wept along with him, and Ares was hailed as the saviour of the Mayan people, ending the week's long drought. Cut to Asgard and the battle for Ragnarok had not gone in Odin's favour. The skies were black, the streets were awash with blood, Fenrir's wrath had been unleashed. As mortals were slain by the wolf, Hel released shadowy spirits bound to her will from the underworld to ensure the defeat of Asgard. Seeing the horrors of Ragnarok firsthand was something Odin never hoped to suffer. Knowing the battle was all but lost, Tyr and Odin roared a battle cry as they drove back the spirits, giving Thor an opening to flee Asgard and save as many mortal souls as he could. But mighty Thor does not roam with a few, he stands with the many. Entrusting his fate to Athena, she fled with the promise of returning with Greek armies to liberate Asgard from its terror. The Japanese woods were silent and coated in fog. If anything living was here, its sounds would not carry on the thick, heavy air. Ares crept through this forsaken place in search of a path to the underworld, seeking answers about Anubis' whereabouts from any source, no matter the evil stench that hung in the air around him. He approached a twisted oak tree, its roots concealing a hollow, black as night. Whispers came from the hole, inviting him down into the abyss, into death. There was something magical about these whispers. They had the power to enchant lesser gods or mortals, but Ares had a will of iron. The whispers continued, Unbind me and I will grant you your greatest desires. Bony fingers reached from the hollow and ran down Ares' chest. Do you desire a lover like none you have known? The power to crush your enemies? None of these offers would tempt Ares. He sensed great power in this being. Certain it must be a god, he inquired. Who lies beneath? I am the matron of the dead, came a whispered response. It was Izanami. Knowing it may be eons until she would get this chance again, she pushed on. Is it vengeance you seek, Ares, she purred. Seeing his face change, she continued. Name who you seek and I shall lead you to them. This I promise. Ares named his target the jackal god Anubis. For a god, I will require my freedom as payment, she whispered. I swear it. Ares had no hesitation, seeing only vengeance for his father's death at the hands of Anubis. Wrapping Izanami's ribbons that bind her around his arm, Ares dragged the matron from her hollow. Journeying west in pursuit of Anubis, Ares came to the banks of the Yellow River. Seeing the demon Izanami at his back, the ever-vigilant Habwa refused their crossing. He knew too well what the demon matron was capable of if freed. Kill him for his insolence, Izanami hissed in Ares' ear. Give the command and I will slaughter him for you. Ares surveyed the river and the mortals who relied on it, washing their clothes, fishing, building mills at the water's edge. Without the Yellow River, these mortals would surely perish, leaving Habwa to a similar fate. Without his worshippers, he would fade away, leaving Ares and Izanami free to cross. With Chak's axe, Ares could stem the flow of rain that feeds the river. Using this threat, he forced Habwa to let them pass. As they crossed the river, Izanami whispered dark mutterings in Ares' ear. You can still kill him, she urged. Her influence over the god of war had grown stronger in their travels, and Ares caved. With a swing of Chak's mighty axe, he sealed the heavens, ceasing the rainfall that gave life. Ares turned away from Habwa, knowing that no one will remember or revere him ever again. The Yellow River would run dry. Continuing west, Izanami guided Ares to Ganesha's temple in India. There, she claimed, cowered Anubis, seeking the protection of Ganesha. He spoke of two paths, one of peace, one of vengeance, terror, and war. 
ending in the destruction of the very ground they stood on. Thinking any rational god would want peace, this was Ganesha's plan to save the innocent Anubis. But Ares was not in a rational state of mind. Blinded by vengeance for his father, he and Izanami set the temple ablaze. Anubis leapt through the temple doors to escape the fire, but was too slow. Ares pinned Anubis to the stone floor. His final words? Your father. I did not kill him. Surely you must know this. Perhaps, in a way, Ares did know, but he had come too far. All that mattered now was his vengeance against the Jackal. With her end of the bargain fulfilled, Izanami's ribbons fell to the ground. She was finally free. The world would know her wrath. The Kingdom of the Sun had been ravaged by the Greek armies after Athena had left. Ares had chained Ra, stolen his sight, and let his soldiers loose on the city. Searching for reinforcements for Asgard, Athena arrives at the burning remnants of the once great city. Stunned by what the armies she had trained have done, she broke the chains of Ra. Athena's wisdom pierced the haze of the soldiers' minds and they dropped to their knees with shame, worshipping Athena. But the goddess of wisdom directed the Greek armies not to herself, but to Ra. Their devout worship healed the sun god and he rose once more, a fire in his eyes brighter than the sun. This fire lit the way for a vision of Asgard, broken and destroyed, with Hell sitting on the throne. Athena offered her soldiers the chance at redemption if they fight alongside her and Ra to bring aid to Asgard. None refused. Their rallying cry was heard across the world as they marched into the jaws of the beast, into Ragnarok. On the march north, the Olympian armies had camped in the Roman countryside. The night was still. Only embers of evening fires remained. Suddenly, there was a blood-curdling cry that pierced the silence and roused the army. Shadows danced through the camp, attacking soldiers and gods alike, the evil work of hell. At her command, frost giants rampaged. Locked in battle, Athena pierced the chest of a giant with her spear, only for it to continue barreling at her, lifting her clear from the ground with a single hand. Crushed in its fist, Athena was waning, but then the frost giant went stiff, dropping her to the ground as a swirl of darkness black as night engulfed the monster. Nox materialized from the darkness, devouring the frost giant in eternal night. Nox whispered a warning in Athena's ear before vanishing. Asgard has fallen, Olympus is next. A hard decision was made. Athena turned her armies towards Greece, leaving Asgard to Hell's control. Arriving at the gates of Olympia, Athena walked the city streets, seeing terror on the faces of the mortals who call it home. Most bowed before her and offered prayers, but there was little hope in their eyes. Upon reaching Mount Olympus, Athena found Ares awaiting her outside the throne room, where Hades had taken control in the absence of her father. Ares proudly proclaimed that Zeus had been avenged, Anubis lay dead at his hand. Athena, knowing the truth, tried to convince Ares that Anubis was innocent. Angry at this slight on his character, Ares raged that Athena had defied him in the Kingdom of the Sun and returned Ra's light to the sky. Hades had been ruling with a tyrannical iron fist in the absence of the two siblings. Even Ares was put off by his actions. Despite their differences, Athena and Ares were brother and sister. They opened the doors to the throne room as one to confront Hades, only to find him completing a dark ritual. To save us all from the perils of Ragnarok, this is what I must do, he explained. Zeus did not understand what must be done, not as I do. It finally dawned on Ares that Hades ordered the murder of Zeus. Ares was furious, but enticed by the ultimate power Hades was offering. As usual, power trumped reason and Ares gave himself over to Hades. Disgusted with her brother, Athena stood against them both, but she was too late. Ares had delayed her long enough for Hades to complete the dark ritual. War with Asgard had come. Brother fought sister, god fought god, pantheon fought pantheon. The world went dark. And that's it for the fall of war. Be sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed my take on this, and subscribe for the Conquest of Ragnarok lore video which will be coming next, where Hades unleashes the underworld upon the surface and war with Asgard comes to fruition. But other than that, I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day, and peace out you nerds.